happy that you guys are tuning in to the Trinity Health Expo and I'm sure just like you I wish this was live in person this year but I'm so glad that we're doing it virtually and hopefully it'll happen live next year so we can all meet each other and say hi and I'm so happy to be here today and I'm going to be talking about healing any and every health issue and ending the bondage of sugar addiction and emotional healing. So I have some notes here that I have to hit. So ending the bondage of sugar and addiction to addiction to sugar. So if anyone here has an addiction to sugar or any kind of food, fast food, fat, um, bad fats, processed foods, or any foods that you know are just not good for you, this is going to be super helpful and also emotional healing. So healing the emotional part, which then in turn heals our desire to eat certain foods. So tying that all in together and just really cutting the cords of the bondage that when we're addicted to foods or any addiction of that matter, that bondage, that cord, I'm gonna talk about how to cut that and how I cut that and how I set myself free in this life and and just on a mission to share that with as many people as possible. And then also we're talking about healing any and every single health issue, because that is what's possible. Any health issue and every health issue, it's possible to heal it. It's possible, not saying that someone can definitely heal it, but it is possible. So we'll talk about the possibilities and I'm gonna talk about how I did it through nutrition, how I healed addiction and overeating and binge eating with nutrition, and then also how I healed it using supplements as well. And I'm gonna talk about how supplements are just a really great quick way to get so much nutrients into our body, to make us feel better in our gut and our brain, to get momentum going, and also the right type of supplements as well. And then I'm gonna talk about affirmations and some biblical proof and biblical evidence that proves that we can heal anything and everything. So the whole, my whole message is that nobody should ever be stuck in thinking that they can never heal something or that they're gonna be stuck suffering with a certain health issue forever. And I'll talk about some spiritual warfare as well and how to break that bondage to addiction. So, that's what I'm going to talk about today, guys. All right. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Liana and I was born and raised in Australia and I moved to America about 11 years ago. So I have been living in the United States in New York, in New York City for most of my time. Absolutely love being here in this country. And I started my journey in Australia and I um, am now in a published author. The Earth Diet was my first book that was ever published, yay! And then my most recent one was Cancer Free With Food that came out last year. And then I'm preparing for a book launch in December, Anxiety Free With Food, so that is on its way. And so I grew up in Outback Australia, which is like right in the middle of Australia. Maybe you've been there to Alice Springs or Uluru. That's where I grew up. And we had a very indigenous rich culture around us. And at my school, we had white kids and we had Aboriginal kids. And so we learned a lot about indigenous culture and we were taken out on school excursions and taught how to survive in the bush. We were taught how to collect bush tucker and we were taught a lot of the indigenous ways and philosophy. So from a young age, as far as I can remember, age five, I remember thinking, wow, these people are so smart. And their philosophy was to eat from the earth and survive off the earth and survive from nature. But they didn't just take, 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 take from nature. They also gave back. So they saw it was like this cycle, this mutual benefit an agreement of nature takes care of us and we take care of nature and aboriginals lived in great health there was no such thing as disease or cancer diabetes obviously because they weren't eating certain foods that cause those health issues and diseases and so i remember thinking that from age five that the healthiest way for us to live was to be as close to nature as possible. And if we could go out to our own backyard and pick fruits and foods straight from the earth, straight from the bush or the tree or the, the plant or the ground or the plant from the roots, that, that we would be living our healthiest life possible and we would be getting the most nutrition 
out of the food per bite that we possibly could. And so did all my schooling there. And then I moved away at 18 to Brisbane City and I was going to university. So it was a bit before then that I started to indulge in junk food. And because we never really had it growing up as kids, when I first would eat sugar, it was like a sugar hit. It was like, it was like a drug. It was like, whoa, my eyes lit up. It was like ding, 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 ding. So much energy for like five or 10 minutes before the crash, but it was like a drug. And around this time, I started to become very anxious and wasn't sure about a fa family situation I was going through, a very hard situation going through the family. A lot of you guys can relate if you've been brought up and had some difficult family issues go on, trauma. And so to, whenever a, a bad feeling would come up or anxiety would come up, the first thing I would want to do is get relief from it. But instead of actually dealing with the emotions and the thoughts that were coming up and the, being uncomfortable in my body, I straight away went through, I want to avoid this. And so I would go to food as my drug and get relief from food, from gummy bears, chocolate, cookies, burgers, fries, any kind of junk food, you name it. And then of course, after that is the crash. And so then I was left with an even worse feeling. And I'm sure if you have... If you emotional eat or binge eat, you can relate. It never feels good after eating junk food or binge eating on junk food ever. And then to then we're in the crash and then to avoid that, we just keep eating more junk food, more junk food, and it becomes this vicious cycle. It's really, really horrible to get stuck in. It takes over your life. It is a form of an eating disorder. It's disorderly eating and it can totally run our life just like cigarettes and drugs and smoking and gambling addiction. It is actually an addiction and a very serious one, but perhaps it's not taken as seriously in society because it's just food. So people don't really think, oh, we need to really make an intervention with this, but it actually is killing people. It's killing people eating this kind of junk food and processed food is killing people and it's an addiction and it's really, really serious. It's causing cancer, diabetes, heart disease, heart attacks, all kinds of health issues. And a lot of people are suffering every day. And so I just remember suffering so much and all I wanted in life, I was in university. My top goal, my number one goal, the only thing I wanted was to be free of this addiction and this impulse to want to eat these junk foods and avoid these bad feelings. I just wanted to be free of it, but I did not know how. And so I kept telling myself on Monday, I'll start again and I'll just never eat junk foods ever again. And then of course came Monday and I was set in my mind like, okay, that's it. I'm just gonna be healthy this week. I'm gonna eat spinach and salad and juices and fruits and vegetables. But then Monday would come and I would have a challenging situation arise and then a craving for junk food. And I would try to ignore it, but it was so strong. And it just really, if if you've gone through this, you know it takes over your, your mind and your whole being. And there's nothing else that you can really focus on other than getting that food. And so I did this for five years five years and I basically destroyed my body and I deprived my body of proper nutrition. I barely ate fruits and vegetables and my gut was just destroyed and I ended up in hospital with a golf ball sized tumor in my lymphatic system right here on the right side of my throat. I had a biopsy done, they put a needle into it, took a piece of it out, sent it away for results, came back. I had three different diagnoses from doctors and in a nutshell, it was early stages of cancer and my options were surgery, cut it out or wait and see what happens. And so, and you know, if it get, got worse, chemo, radiation. And so those were not an option for me. And I thank my childhood upbringing for this because I learned from the indigenous people that if we have a tumor or a lump somewhere in our body and we just get it cut out, just taken out, and we don't actually address the root cause, the inner cause, it's just gonna pop up somewhere else. And for people obviously that are in a, in a situation where they're stage four or it's like really deathly, you know, obviously getting surgery to get it cut out would totally make sense. And then you wanna make sure that you're also healing the really deep inner, inner stuff so that it doesn't come up somewhere else. But I wanted to heal it once and for all. And so I use that as my wake up call and an opportunity to really go deep within and seek also how I could heal. 
because I knew all this knowledge from the Aboriginal people. See, this is the thing. We all know how to be healthy. Like logically, we know. Eat fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, organic meats and fish, you know, if you're a meat eater. We all know that's the way to do it. But then there's this other part of human beings, this emotional, emotional response and impulse that we have. And also the mental part of it too. We have different part of our mind kind of running the show sometimes. We're not always in control. And so even if we know how to be healthy, if we have an addiction that overrides that knowledge. And so that was what was happening for me. So I really had to surrender and go deep and say, okay, I have no idea how to heal this. Cause I remember I was in hospital and I just had the biopsy done. And I was like, whoa, what have I done to myself? I have done this through diet. And I knew I'd done it through diet and gotten the tumor through diet because it was in my lymphatic system for one, which is the body sewage system. And I had just eaten toxins and toxins and so much toxins and poisons for five years straight. And so I knew I couldn't get away with it forever. And so the only thing I wanted to do in hospital was go out and get some McDonald's and some chocolate and ice cream and go home and eat that. And then I thought, this is crazy. This is only going to make my situation worse. Like I really need to do something bigger. So I surrendered and I said, God, universe, I need to know, like, I need to know how to heal this. How can I heal this? And how can I break this addiction to junk food? And that's when the greatest gift of my entire life, even to this day, happened. And I remember it so clearly, it was just like this thought, like planted in my mind, this download, it was like, here's the challenge. Eat only foods from the earth for 365 days and do a blog, like write about it in a blog to hold you accountable. And I believe that God gives us all different gifts and God gave me the gift of writing from a young age. I've always been writing, 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 so many words, so much writing. And so a blog totally made sense. And then I thought, cool, people will hold me accountable because also I kept it secret. And that's another thing too, if we keep things secret, we're in bondage as well with addiction. So that is really one of the first things as well is to come out in the open. So I came out clean in a blog. I said, I've been binge eating on junk food for five years. Nobody knows about it, not even my family. And now I'm in this health crisis, but I'm only gonna eat natural foods for 365 days. And here is the greatest part. Every time I, ha I told myself in the blog, every time I have a craving for junk foods or for something unhealthy, I'm gonna think, how can I fulfill this craving in the most natural way possible. Then I thought, okay, I'll make chocolate balls using natural ingredients. So I made chocolate balls with almond flour, cacao powder, honey, and I added some almond butter or some peanut butter. And I did this for everything I craved, cookie dough, chicken nuggets, burgers, tacos. I made healthier versions for it using wholesome ingredients. I made fries, I baked them, I cooked them in olive oil and coconut oil, and I fulfilled all my cravings using these wholesome ingredients. So then I stopped craving junk foods, which was a miracle to me. And if you're addicted to sugar and junk foods, this will also feel like a miracle to you. And I call this the upgrade system which I write about actually in all my books because it's so important. So the upgrade system is every time you have a craving for something that you know is not healthy or that you know is not serving your highest good or you know it's just not conducive for your health, life, lifelong health, then think, okay, how can I fulfill this craving in the most natural way possible? And that's what the Earth Diet is all about. The Earth Diet is all about living our most natural life in this modern world. So as natural as possible with everything from makeup, skincare, household products, foods, we wanna get back to nature as much as possible while in this modern world. Obviously not everything in every area of our life is possible, but if we do that, it's gonna be so much better for the environment and so much better for our health because we take the toxin overload off our system. And so, so the upgrade system would encourage you guys to read that. And also, you know, let me know on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, what is your biggest obstacle? And I can help you replace that, whether it's cheese, alcohol, you know, the healthiest alcohols to drink is wine and tequila and vodka. 
um, whatever it is, chocolate, chips, cheesecake, ice cream, whatever is your biggest craving. You can either make it in a more wholesome way or there are so many great brands and products that we can buy these days that would be an upgrade from eating this conventional stuff. And an upgrade means that it doesn't have refined white sugar or corn syrup, which is so toxic for the body. It's incredibly awful, like refined white sugar. I wish it was banned, or at least for kids in schools, it should be banned, but it's carcinogenic, which means it causes cancer and it causes anxiety. It's a neurotoxin. The brain does not know what to do with it. So an upgrade food, say for example, an ice cream, you can either make it yourself at home with cashews and I have so many recipes in my book for all all these types of foods and I'll show you one upgrade oh this one's for chicken nuggets and then so many desserts as well this is a cashew cheesecake made with cashews so you can also then I can also show you okay here's how you can make your own ice cream at home but here's how, some brands that you can buy at Whole Foods or from a health food shop that is a lot cheaper. I mean, a lot healthier, <laughs> not cheaper, sorry. <laughs> Usually costs a bit more, but it's worth it. So this ice cream won't have the refined white sugar, perhaps won't have the dairy because dairy does not agree with every person's body. It doesn't have all the chemicals and preservatives. So this upgrade system can release so much emotional heaviness and weight and mental guilt from us that is such a relief and can help us feel so much momentum to keep being healthy and to want to make healthier choices and so this really is the key to breaking this addiction to sugar or any junk foods and will help heal the emotional part too because when we're addicted to these types of foods we beat ourselves up so much like I, you know, I hate myself, I feel guilty, I wish I could stop eating this, I should be able to stop eating this, I know what I need to do, but I'm not doing it. There's all kinds of guilt and emotional heaviness that comes with being addicted to sugar or any kind of junk food. So this upgrade system would really encourage you to apply it and just start feeling some relief like today and start with your biggest obstacle first. So whether it's chocolate, cheesecake, ice cream, burgers, fries, whatever it is. Also even candy. You can make your own candy at home by making a fruit smoothie and then putting it in a dehydrator or an oven and you'll get fruit leathers and you can roll up and squish into balls. Or you can go to Whole Foods or Amazon or Vitacost and buy Smart Sweets, which is a candy sweetened with stevia. You cannot taste the stevia, I promise. And they're absolutely delicious. I send it to people all the time as a gift. And they're like, I can't believe it. This tastes like actual candy, but it's way healthier for us. There is no refined sugar, no corn syrup, three grams of sugar per bag, 90 calories per bag versus like 500 from conventional gummy bears. So this upgrade system may sound really simple, but it is so, so powerful and it will change your life if you apply it just like it did mine and thousands of other people from around the world. And so, so excited for you guys to try this upgrade system. So let me know if you have any questions on that. I'm happy to help. Um, so I mentioned I was an author. My All my books are bestsellers. Yay. Thank you to everyone who supported me over the years. I'm also a certified nutritionist and I have a private practice at Complete Wellness New York City, which is a medical health center in New York. So I do that once or twice a week. And the rest of the week, I'm making new recipes, doing chef work, and helping you guys like through an online platform like this. Um, yeah, so yay. Okay, and next I wanna talk about healing any and every health issue. So I realize that there are health issues that doctors say are not able to be healed, but I do not believe in that and I believe that everything can be healed and if not healed, at least can be worked towards improving or even just feeling better. So I think that once a doctor tells somebody that they can't heal this or they only have a few weeks to live, that, that mentally damages a person and it's really dangerous. And also we need to remember that doctors are not God. They really don't know when someone is going to die. Sure, sometimes, they could be right with their predictions, 
but they really don't have a right to say you only have this many weeks to live because we're living in a time when miracles are actually possible and when people change their diet and change what's going into their body that can very quickly transform someone's health and healing progress and there's actually a documentary on netflix it's called human nature i would encourage you all to watch that human nature and it's about genetics they talk about gene editing in that but aside from that whether you agree on gene editing or not it shows that our genes are always repairing themselves always working to repair themselves and if we get attacked from a virus or a disease it shows how the genes will want to repair themselves and to get rid of that virus and that disease like our genes are actually working for us our body is actually working for us in support of us and so we get in the way of this because we eat all these toxic poisonous foods that damage our genes and weaken our immune system so we really need to do the best that we can to support our immune system and our genes so that our body can just do its job in keeping us alive as long as possible and healing disease and overcoming it and I love going to the biblical evidence of this because the Bible is rooted in such truth, if you say, and it, there's a few, few proverbs in there that I want to read that God has promised us. And I really, really believe this. This is a promise from God that we do not have to suffer from the same health issues for years and years and years. Although in the Bible, there are many stories that talk about people going around the same mountain for 40 years or not being able to get out of the wilderness for 40 years. And I once felt like I was in the wilderness, just beating a drum, doing the same thing over and over again. It was so tiring. And every day I would just keep asking God, keep talking to God, keep praying to God, like, God, please show me another way, help me get out of this. And so if we keep seeking and we keep God close and God is as close as one thought away, like, hey God, Hi God, God, hi, hi, hi. That brings us close to God right in this moment. And so those stories show that people do suffer for 40 years plus with the same health issues, but that we don't have to. And it shows that it's a person's choice whether they suffer with the same health issue for that many years. It's a choice. It really, really is a choice. And for me, that's a truth because I experienced that. And it is a choice. We choose that through our thoughts, through what, we th what we're thinking, if we're praying or not, and if we're actively seeking to heal this health issue. And it can take years and years and years to heal, but it's worth it if we're on the path, right? So say you have a health issue and you can make it worse and go down this path and keep doing the same things, the same things, right? You're going on this path and this path is leading to more disease and more disease and then eventually like death, suffering, suffering, death, suffering, suffering, disease, death, like not fun. And you don't have to do that. That's a choice. That's a choice if you keep eating the same foods, keep thinking the same thoughts, not actively doing anything to change your path, not, not doing anything new, right? If you have a health issue and you go this way instead, you're like, okay, I don't know how to do it. This is scary, but I'm going to go this way anyway. I have hope. I believe I can be healed. It's a biblical truth. God's promised me I can do the upgrade system. I can eat these better foods. You're on this path of hopefulness. You have faith. You have joy. You're feeling better. You get some relief. You get some healing. And not everyone makes it. I get that. But being on this path is way better and most people do make it most people do get get freedom from it and that's what happened to me i went on this path and it took a while but eventually i, I was healed and after three months of me on this path the tumor had completely dissolved completely gone and i had to do a lot of new things though than i had ever done before and i write about this in my books and after that it took me a good four years of being consistent with beet juice, green juice, the upgrade system, and keep, keeping on seeking this healthy balance. And I was really interested in, God, what kind of health do you want for us? What kind of health do you want for me? What does that look like? 
What does a good balance of sleep look like and rest and work and relationships? And it took me a good four years of seeking and healing and eating good foods until my body completely transformed. I'm talking my gut, I'm talking how I looked. I dropped a lot of excess weight and I would look at myself in photos and be like, wow, it actually happened. The healing happened and I'm completely transformed. And so now that's why when I work with people, I'm realistic and I tell them, look, this might take you one year to two to three to four years, but it doesn't matter if it takes that long because it's worth it. And you're gonna feel better as you go along that path. And so these biblical truths are, one of them is Jeremiah 30, 17 is, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds. That is what's possible. And I know that for sure. And I know that God wants to heal and restore our wounds and restore our health. That is truth. So we must believe that. And it also says in the Bible that first we must have hope and we must believe. We only need to believe a tiny bit because then that is possible. And so if we just believe a tiny bit, even if we're suffering and maybe we've been addicted to something for 20 to 40 years, it's like, this is impossible, but I believe that it is possible for me to break out of it somehow with God, with making different choices and just having that belief will can catapult our healing. Another one is Proverbs 15, 15. And for the despondent, Every day brings trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continual feast. That's a good one. For the despondent, every day brings trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continual feast. So I learned that no matter what, that to keep a happy heart and be as grateful as possible, because the happiest people may not have everything, but the happiest people that I know, and also I increased my happiness and my joy was when I started to practice gratitude. Gratitude doesn't just happen. We definitely have to practice it. So writing gratitude things down every day can help or saying gratitude things, or you could even call a friend or a family member and just say, look, I feel really grateful for this and this and this and this. As much as you can talk about things that you're grateful for, it will increase your happiness and your joy. So we always want to look for opportunities to be grateful or to to talk to people about how grateful we are for certain things. And that will give us a happy heart. And then life is a continual feast, meaning life is continuously abundant and just joyful and really great. Okay, the, another one I wanted to share is Proverbs 1530. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. So a cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. So again, that's talking about also being grateful and also a cheerful look as well brings joy to the heart. So we can always find find things to smile about, be grateful about, and also smile at people. Like we never know when we smile at a stranger how much that just uplifts them and changes their day and, and that makes them feel happy. And there is, it does say in the Bible too, that we receive more when we give rather than receive. So if we give somebody else a smile or a cheerful look, even though we're suffering with a health issue or addiction, it can uplift them. And then if we see them get uplifted, we get uplifted as well. And good news makes for good health. So again, practicing gratitude. It is so, so, so powerful. And then also, if you are really stuck in a strong bondage to addiction to sugar and junk foods right now, your intention is to be free of it and your dream and your goal is to be free of it. You know that, but you might find yourself tonight or tomorrow in this impulsive place where you are, are the addictions come on strong. You're just going to eat this food. So if that does happen to you to help release that bondage and cut the cord, when you're eating that food, that junk food that you know just isn't good for you, you can be talking to God the whole time and say, God, here I am eating this McDonald's right now or this KFC or this chocolate or whatever it is that isn't good and say, 
this is not my intention to eat this forever. And I don't want to eat this forever, but I feel in bondage for it. But I know you're helping me break the cords. And eventually I would love to be eating an organic version of this. Like imagine if there was an organic restaurant around the corner from you that made amazing burgers and fries and fried chicken. You would eat that instead. Imagine that it's made with whole, more wholesome ingredients, but tastes, it tastes just as good, if not better than the fast food stuff. You could be saying, yes, I'm eating this right now, but this is not my intention. And eventually I'll be eating an organic version or I'll be making it at home, or I just won't have the desire to eat this. So I know that that's what's coming. So even though you're eating that food, you can start to free yourself from the bondage of it. And here are some affirmations that you can start to think as much as possible. So write these down. And whenever you get a space, like if you're in a line for a supermarket or you're lining up somewhere or you know, you're know you at a gas station waiting, whenever you have a few moments and think, what can I think about? Think about these affirmations, like put these into your brain. Think about things that you're grateful for and these affirmations because affirmations and when we think a thought, we create new neural pathways in our brain. And those neural pathways create webs in our brain and they fire off. So every time we think gratitude, it goes to the gratitude part in our brain and our brain neural pathways fire off more and more and more of that. And so it's like an electrical circuit and we can get all that gratitude running through our body. So the affirmations are, all is well with my soul. All is well with my soul. How nice is that? So I used to think that a lot, that affirmation, even when it was not all well with my soul. <laughs> but I thought, you know what, eventually it will be all well with my soul. And now I can tell you more than ever before, if I, when I say all is well with my soul, I really, really 100% know that all is well with my soul. And you know, I've given my soul to God, so my soul is resting with God, so my soul is at peace. So I'm very, very at peace and I have more joy and peace than ever before in my life. And so, but it, it wasn't always like that. And so I would just say that and I would know, okay, every time I think all is well with my soul, I'm creating the neural pathway that one day it'll be true. And this is the cool thing with affirmations. One day they will be true if we keep thinking them. Okay, another one is I breathe in peace. I breathe out tension. I breathe in peace. I breathe out tension. I breathe in peace. I breathe out tension. And lastly, this one helps with anxiety. So when I eat certain foods, I am aware of their power to immediately calm my nervous system and makes me feel very in control. So when I eat certain foods, I am aware of their power to immediately calm my nervous system and makes me feel very in control. That's another really good one. So affirmations are super powerful, guys, super powerful. And lastly, I just wanna talk about supplements. So supplements are amazing. It, we just have to make sure we're getting the right kind of supplements. And so when I was researching for my new book, Anxiety Free With Food, I did a lot of research on which are the top foods in the world proven by science and case studies and researchers to reduce anxiety. And what I came across was a lot of herbs and plants and those are now put into supplements. And so I started taking all these different supplements like ashwagandha, shusandra berry, lemon balm, holy basil, turmeric, uh, chlorella, spirulina, bilberry. I started taking all these supplements and omegas as well, omega fats. And so I'm taking all these supplements and doing an experiment to see what it would do to my brain and nervous system. Well, sure enough, after just a few days of taking these supplements, I started to feel a huge difference in my brain health, more focus. I felt like my brain was more whole, if that makes sense, instead of being scattered and all over the place, my brain just felt whole and focused. I felt calm. It felt amazing. And from the research I did, these certain foods and supplements, what happens is they're 
they help to boost neurotransmitter production, which means that they help fire off the neurotransmitters in the brain. Serotonin is one of them, so they help release feel-good chemicals, dopamine and GABA in the brain as well. So they help release all these feel-good energy in our, and emotions in our body while having a positive impact on the brain and giving the brain energy at the same time as focus and calming the nervous system. Remarkable. And so what I found was that with people who are really stuck in a vicious cycle like binge eating or emotional eating or overeating is that they're one lacking nutrients and that's what also has us crave these quick fast foods and two just really really stuck in in the in the cycle so one thing that can help break the cycle it's very powerful is taking supplements because it's very easy doesn't require as much effort as you going to the kitchen and making a whole meal. And this is for people who are really stuck and really suffering and just need to really get to the next step, get some momentum going. So I would recommend taking supplements just to get them in, get them down, get them in your gut, get them in your brain, start feeling better because then at the end of the day, your, your mind can't beat you up anymore and you can tell yourself, you know what? No, I did have my good supplements today. I took care of my gut. I took care of my, my brain. I'm good and you will notice after a few days you will start to feel momentum. Once you start to feel that momentum, everything gets easier and then you can start making healthier food choices and start getting in the kitchen and cooking. The key is to find the right supplements because the supplement industry is not super regulated. So it has to be from someone you trust. I love ancient nutrition supplements and this year after researching for all of this stuff from my book, after taking all the anxiety supplements, I made my own formula and I created my own supplements, anxiety-free supplements that will come out in December with my new book. I'm so excited for you guys to try it. So if you are suffering with anxiety, depression, focus, these can really help your brain and help to get that momentum going and help to reduce the anxiety because when, if we're riddled with anxiety, that's when we instantly crave these bad foods or sugars to make us feel better. And so definitely give them a go, try them out for 30 days and see the difference it makes for you. But I've been taking them ever since March this year, 2020, and they are remarkable. And this formula I've given to some of my friends and they're just like, wow, this is so awesome. So I'm so excited for them to come out. And I've been working with a manufacturer to make sure they're the highest quality. They're all organic, non-GMO, and I'm gonna be taking them every day as well, just with you guys. So I wanted to make sure, obviously, that they're the highest quality possible and not cutting any corners with costs or anything like that. Like they are legit going to be absolutely amazing so i'm so excited for you guys to try those supplements and yeah give that a go but th this is another tool that we can use just to help get us on the healthy track and to help break that vicious cycle and that addiction to to fast food and so um yeah so utilize supplements if that is one of the tools that you want to use and with remembering that we can heal anything and every health issue just remember there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of different tools that we can use to help heal us. And so I've found these tools be the most effective for me and thousands of other people that I've worked with around the world. And I write about it in my books. And so just never give up, ever. It's not worth giving up ever, 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 ever. You can fall down and you can, you know, take a nap and just give it all to God and just, you know, cry it all out to God, but then just get back up again and just keep going. And we're all in this together on earth, this, this healing path and this healing journey. And I can promise you that on the other side of it, there is freedom and it is worth it to keep going and just keep, keep, keep on trying and just never give up. Um, yeah, so I'm so excited to connect with you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this and would love to hear from you on social media. If you have any questions at all, I'm here to help. And yeah, for anyone who really needs to go really deep with it, you could also look at spiritual warfare. I also use that as a tool and you could just Google that. And there are some prayers that you can do for spiritual warfare to really cut cords with really dark spirits or anything de demonic that you feel like might be controlling you or that's in your brain and, or your mind and just invite God into your mind to basically override 
any of those thoughts or patterns that are happening. So that's another really powerful tool as well, uh, is spiritual warfare. So yeah, guys, I'm so, so excited for that this um, Trinity Health Expo is happening virtually and hopefully I can meet you guys next year. And yeah, in the meantime, if you want extra recipes, definitely check out my books on Amazon. And the anxiety one will be out in December, but you can pre-order now, which is really exciting to give you one of the first to get it as soon as it comes out. Awesome. All right, guys, take care. And I hope to chat with you soon.